Okay, we got a, um, a few slides together to give a little bit of an idea of uh, some of the some of the scenarios throughout our life, a uh, little bit about our background and a little bit about um, places we lived and uh, our families and children. We, um, you know, when you're doing a slideshow, it, it can, when you're picking out slides, it's pretty hard to, to work them down to a reasonable number. Like I started with like 964 slides. And, <laughs> I got it down and that's to not even all that 890. <laughs> and uh, we, we're, we're trying to be, we, we want to be respectful of your time and, um, and so on. So we're going to try to keep this moving and um, we're not going to show you 890 slides. There. Now I started with this slide. This is the, the house that we lived in, our first house after we got married. This is. The reason I started here is we met in the northern Saskatchewan. We were both up into the far north, working with the uh, natives, which, are, which we called Indians at that time, which are now known as First Nation. And, um, and, and the picture indicates that the lifestyle and the um, Quite a bit is different in in lifestyle up up in the far north, and so that's uh, that's why we started off with this picture. The house was uh, was quite small. It's something like 22 feet by 22 feet. There was no running water. Our landlord um, had a truck with a water tank on it, and he and we, like a lot of other people in the town, had to have our water tank filled up like every week and. Um, I, there was electric pump that pumped water up to the sink, but it was um, relatively primitive. And every once in a while, it would get so cold that the oil kind of gelled. Yeah. yeah that, that. Say again? Okay, that's, that just belongs to the landlord, and, and he lived next door, and, and um, I don't think it stayed there too long, but um, you know, it's just something that was still on the site. Okay, my background, this is a picture of my family. Uh, when I was just a type, that's me on the extreme right. I must be about three years old. I imagine it was taken in about 19, um, well, when I was about three. <laughs> 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 and, um, and my mom and dad, my brother Bill, um, with uh, black hair and um, working from right over to left, uh, Margaret. And then Lawrence, who is, who is here someplace. And Evangeline, on the extreme left, who uh, passed away something like eight or 10 years ago. If you can't see, you could maybe move. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't want you to and this is a little bit later picture. This is when we lived in York, Anna. Uh, it must be about, uh, it must be about uh, 14 or something there. <clears throat> OK. When I, um, after, after Velma and I decided that we're going to get married and wanted to get married, I, I wanted to go home and talk to my parents. So I, uh, I hitchhiked home to uh, Harrisburg from Saskatchewan. I mean from, you know, Saskatchewan. And uh, I got home in time for Easter. And at that time we were having a celebration for my parents' 30th wedding anniversary. And this is mom and dad, and uh, we might have another picture of them. This, this is, um, okay, and then that's the rest of the family on that same occasion. This is uh, 1965. This uh, picture was in the, in, in the, uh, the uh, parsonage for the Messiah Home Congregation. My dad was pastor of the congregation that met at Messiah Home. Okay, so one reason I came home is I wanted to get my car. I wanted to talk to mom and dad about uh, my uh, plan to marry someone they had never met. 
and also to get my car and to get my canoe. The canoe I built when I was in um, high school. And um, this picture was taken on the shores of uh, Lake Superior on my way out to Saskatchewan. And this then is uh, Velma's, um, a little bit about Velma's situation where she lived. Do you want to comment on this? Okay, this is the barn, the famous barn where uh, I learned to drive tractor into it because they had the kind of barns they had you could drive in the back right up into the haymow or hayloft and in the front you walked uh, level into the uh, cow barn. Uh, behind, you can't see it, but behind the barn there was always a slough or a, a uh, little pond and uh, that's where I learned that cats can swim. My brothers told us we had to get on the raft and watch to see if cats can swim, and they do. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, oh, you can see the pond now. Yes, that was in the back. So that was always fun for us, and you can see it was a farm. Uh, I lived on a mixed farm, and my parents worked very hard. It was not a... Um, prosperous farm like many other people's farms maybe that you know of. Uh, I grew up with electricity coming into the house when I was in grade 12. So every cup of water had to be carried into the house uh, and every cup of water had to be taken care of out of the house. So you can see the kind of um, home that I had. It was uh, very cozy. Go ahead. These are my parents. Um, they were resilient, strong, one foot in front of the other, and away we go. We're not going to let anything get in the, our way. You can see that they are um, very, very sober there, but they weren't always sober. That's the kitchen where we had many meals and wonderful meals. Um, it's hard to believe now, but I remember when I was about in grade two, I apparently wasn't gaining weight enough. And we went to the doctor, and uh, Dad came home, and he said, okay, Velma, you're going to eat the corners of the table now. <laughs> I had gotten some kind of medicine. I don't know what it was, but anyway, that's the kitchen table. This is a, um, a typical view along the highway in the, in the prairies where you have these grain elevators. I, don't, I think they're disappearing from the scenery now, but uh, grain elevators, the telephone lines, uh, typical prairie scenery in the winter time. Okay, in 1972, my parents had sale of the farm, and we were here already in Pennsylvania. But we went up to the sale, and uh, here's a, a, a meat grinder that was for sale. It was a rather uh, significant event because that was the end of the farm, and my parents retired in British Columbia. And there you can see the Siwash <laughs> culture. Uh, that's myself with the back with the red ribbon and my older sister Lydia who is not here my aunt Katie um, My father's uh, sister-in-law with the blue kerchief and what's my, what's Siwash? Oh the Siwash is the sweater the, uh, the, um, the Lovely patterns and so on that uh, Apparently that is coming back now. I didn't know that the last time I was in Calgary <clears throat> One of my nephews asked if I had one, and I should have brought it along because he would have liked to have had it. <laughs> uh, there are the three sisters. We've all gotten along very well. Um, always lots to think about and talk about. Elsie's here. Elsie is here, um, sitting right over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming, Elsie. And the other is Lydia. Mm -hmm. So we just go back one more. Uh, we all live far apart. Lydia is in British Columbia. I'm here in Pennsylvania, and Elsie is in Calgary. Uh, this is my home, and my father would read the German Der Beute, which is a German paper, and my brother is on the left, and he's reading the uh, Watchers Manitou. Uh, they were both always reading those papers. Uh, this is a very typical scene when I'd go home. <laughs> and here's my extend, uh, the whole family. Um, I'll start on the extreme left. That's my sister-in-law, Helen. We call her Chick. And my brother, John. Yeah, and then the next in the front is my sister Lydia. Behind her is my brother L. In front of her is Hildegard or Hildy. A lot of you know about her. And then my older brother Peter uh, in the back. And then David and myself and Elsie and Michael. I just want to say something at this point about how significant every one of my siblings have been in my life. 
But most uh, significant, I maybe, I don't know what, if it's most, but when I was in high school, my older brother, who then was already finished university, decided that I should go to the university. And Mennonite girls on the prairie farms did not go to the university. Not one friend that I know of, not one family that had girls went to the university. But he told my mother that I needed to go and see what it was like, and he would take me there and so on. And she finally consented, even though they, liked, they were very fond of education. But I always attribute my degree and my career to my brother because he made it possible for me to go and for my parents to bless that. So then came the wedding. Um, we had, uh, well, this is just a few, um, few wedding pictures. The, uh, the photographer for this was Henry Garman, who was a teenager at that time. He was a son of uh, John Garman. Some of you know John and Ruth Garman, um, brethren in Christ, uh, people who went to Saskatchewan really to do um, church planting and so on. This is after the uh, ceremony. Joyous time, it appears to be. <laughs> <laughs> and um, here, here's the, the party, the wedding party. To the extreme right is uh, our, our longtime friend still, we keep in touch somewhat, um, Ray Mackay. He's a um, treaty native. In other words, he has rights of the treaty um, as, as far as um, the treatment, um, but he's also a very uh, well-educated and, and productive uh, professional person. And then uh, Lawrence, my brother, was best man, and he's here today. And uh, me and uh, Velma, and then uh, Elsie. Then our extreme left is Nancy McKay, wife of Ray. They were very dear friends still. Nancy was a teacher as well, and I lived with her uh, when I was up north. There was very short, a very shortage of housing because Larange is on, the town itself is on the Canadian Shield, which means there's very little soil, uh, and you have to almost blast anything that you want to build on there. So we were given a teacher aid. There's another picture that was taken on the wedding day. My parents, her parents, uh, outside of the house. Okay, uh, Velma's brothers were always uh, good for a laugh, and uh, when I didn't realize they did it, they got a hold of my car. They uh, took it up into the barn, so I, uh, when I went to look for it, I didn't know where it was, and they painted all these inscriptions. Um, amateurs. <laughs> uh, amateurs, something like uh, new at the game. <laughs> and um, I, I guess I got to point out that... Um, you see that trunk sitting on that luggage rack in the back says can't travel and so on and so forth. And in front of that, believe it or not, is a, uh, is a moose rat antlers, moose horns. Okay, this is, this is we never did, I never did read the Better Homes and Garden book on uh, planning uh, honeymoons or getting married and I, I didn't uh, follow the rules, I don't think. But um, in, in, our, uh, in our place of business where I was working with the handicraft uh, shop in... Um, That's all right, just a little lower. Mm -hmm. uh, with the handicraft shop in Larange, we um, sold a lot of things to the uh, tourists that came up, particularly the fishermen. And uh, a lot of Americans came up and they would buy, um, buy things from us and we often would have uh, moose antlers or deer antlers and this one American guy bought these moose antlers and he could not take them home with him on the airplane. It was uh, not enough space or whatever. So what to do? I said, hey, I just, uh, remember, I'm going to, uh, I'll be going into the States um, in a few weeks and I could, I could on bring him down. <laughs> I could, I could bring, I could bring them down, and uh, we could ship them from uh, some point in northern um, United States to your, to your home in California, and uh, and so we did. And uh, and I, I have to give Velma credit for tolerating that. You really got to love a girl like that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
This is um, <laughs> the camper trailer that I built for this trip, and this is our first campsite on our honeymoon. The, uh, the first night we stayed in a motel in Swift Current, and then we hit the road heading west, and uh, this, is our, um, this is our camper. <laughs> this, this is our, our, our camper. I, I, uh, I, I built this on, in my spare time. <laughs> okay, this is, this is at Glacier National Park. Uh, and uh, we took a couple pictures. <laughs> we were young ones. Um, another uh, campsite uh, where we camped. Now, that wooden crate is the crate. <laughs> I, I stopped at a lumber yard and bought some lumber and built this crate <laughs> to uh, ship those antlers <laughs> to the guy in California. And I. <laughs> okay, up, up north. Um, in La Ronge, in, in our northern community, this is the outfit that I worked for, the Northern Indian Handicraft Cooperative Limited. And these are the ladies, basically, who do the uh, handicraft work that we would oversee. We would, um, we would perhaps give them a pre-cut out um, material to sew up for moccasins, and they would uh, assemble them and do beadwork on them and bring them in and then we would we would pay them for what we thought uh, was worth or they would just make stuff on their own they would use their own leather own resources and so we they supplied us with all kinds of uh, handicraft John Garman had started that process so that the Indian women could make some money and if you have a pair of moccasins and one is very large and the other one very small, which often they would make, it wouldn't sell. So that was why he was doing some of that kind of um, inspection or whatever. Yeah, or, we, yeah, we, had to, we had to look out for quality control and for size uniformity. And uh, that was one of our major uh, challenges. Um, David was there with 1W service. The Brethren in Christ has the conscientious objection status, and that's why he was there. That's, that's correct. I was, um, in, I was uh, called up by the draft board um, just during the Vietnam uh, era. Okay, the main thing I did while I was up there was to build them a new building, and, and we, uh, built, um, we built the building with... Uh, a basement, a large basement, I think it's 34 by 50 feet, and we mixed all the concrete right on site because there was no ready mix concrete available. These are native fellas that, uh, that, that worked for us, and uh, I, was, uh, I was in charge of building that uh, building. Just a minute, I'm going to say something. One day he came home and he said, hardly anybody showed up. And I said, what happened? He says, well, I paid them yesterday, so they have enough money for today. <laughs> and this is, um, we're, we're moving right along with the uh, construction. We uh, made the walls nine feet high. That's that, that extension on top of the forms is to give a little extra space for the uh, work rooms down in the basement. And... Um, this is the finished building. And Bill and Jane came up and helped. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, they were there for a few days. OK, another, another uh, extracurricular activity I was able to participate in was, uh, was during the winter time when work was slow in the handicraft shop, I went out and uh, did some, um, geolo uh, participated in a geological survey we uh, lived in this tent for about three weeks, and the, I won't explain what the survey consisted of, but we were on snowshoes uh, all day long. Uh, you and, and some other guys, I wasn't there. I, yeah, right, it was, it was me and a bunch of other guys working for this uh, prospector who had the rights to, um, to uh, some mineral, mineral rights in a certain area, and, and we would cross the frozen lake and and cross the islands, and and it was it was quite a process, but it was a, a unique experience for sure. Another unique experience was moose hunting. I had the unfortunate experience of uh, 
we, well, we flew out with uh, a bush pilot who dropped us off in a frozen lake, and uh, it was me and two other guys, and I walked, I was walking, heading for the shore, and didn't realize I was walking on the thin ice where the uh, water flowed into the lake, and I fell through the ice. <clears throat> and so the first thing I thought of as I was sinking was the waterproof matches in my, uh, in my pocket. And so I, I built a fire, spent most of the day beside the fire until the guys came up towards the end of the day, and uh, I had no, <laughs> nothing much to show for it. And we uh, managed to get a hold of a boat, and um, I, I, bought a, um, I bought a small boat from some uh, natives who were, needed some work, and I bought it and did the work and got a hold of a, of a motor, and we had good times in the lake with that. And we had my canoe. This is a shot one evening uh, when I was on a nearby lake, and a beaver was swimming across the water and made an interesting... Um, interesting scene. Okay, this, in the winter time, the lakes were frozen. This is an opportunity to build roads across the lake. You get to places with your car that you couldn't get to in the summertime. And um, actually the first, um, I got there, I got to um, La Ronge on the Saturday and the next day was Sunday and I met Velma at church on Sunday. She was playing piano. And uh, there, was a, there was a young fella that, um, that was always interested in getting young people together, other young people together, and going out uh, for a drive. And so that, uh, that Sunday, we went out for a long drive on the uh, winter roads across the frozen lakes to, um, to an interesting place called Stanley Mission, where there's a beautiful Anglican church that was built many years ago. But you can't, you can only get there by winter roads or by, or by flying. It's a long, another story. Okay, now Velma can tell about this. I went up to teach Indian children. I had uh, not planned on that, but when I was uh, about to get my certificate one day in May, I saw this uh, big poster that they needed teachers in the north. And I thought, well, that would be a nice ministry, so I did. Uh, a very unique experience, so I went there. I had some training that summer, went there in September to teach. Um, and as you know, uh, I don't didn't grow up speaking Cree, <laughs> and they didn't grow up speaking English. So I had a grade one classroom, uh, very challenging, lots of uh, different experiences, head lice, you name it, um, giving them breakfast every morning and so on. So this is a, a better home than most of them. Most of them lived in teepees, but this was a structured home. Go ahead. Okay, okay. and this is uh, those same kids and a little broader view of their of their living situation. Next, to back to show our house again in this, uh, uh, and, and the next picture is a, um, a little friend that we had. Uh, uh, this, some natives came in from the um, bush one day and they, they came to me and they said, hey, we got this bear cub are you interested? And well, I didn't have a bear cub, <laughs> and so yeah, I, I think I paid him twenty dollars. I, I didn't know what I was going to do with him, but um, but we we would feed him. The kids um, sometimes would walk by on their way to school and um, give them parcels, por morsels from their um, from their lunch. And um, before long, I. Um, I unloaded him too. I, I, there was a French uh, trapper there that, that was interested in in the bear group, so I um, I gave him up. Uh, we had uh, we had, there's some good stories about the bear, but I'm not going to take the time. Oh, this is a Christmas card that we used one year. David made that. Just to depict our, our Die life. Die cut. Okay, now we're going to move from, um, we, we moved to Saskatoon, we were there for one winter after the two years in La Ronge, and now it's time to move to Pennsylvania, and, and Lawrence came up to help us move, and there's his Studebaker Lark oh, he's not here. Uh, pulling a trailer, and then my MG pulling our camper trailer, which we loaded down with 
possessions. Then we also had a Volkswagen at the tail end there, which um, Shirley and I drove. Shirley and <laughs> Velma drove that to Pennsylvania. And this is where we lived in our first place in State College, a, a mobile home in a, a park, which mostly uh, housed graduate students. And the, um, on the eastern end of State College, just off 322. Okay, this was a common scene at our place, Velma studying. <laughs> uh, she, I, I tell you, uh, she's, she's an amazing person to uh, stick to a project and, and, and put in the hours and hours and hours that it takes to, uh, to pull a project together. And uh, I just... Uh, lots of encouragement. Lots, it's, it's quite something. Okay, here's another... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Here's another uh, little uh, side experience that we had, uh, which is another experience uh, that most people don't get. This is, is our friend uh, Sandy, <laughs> Sandy, who is blushing right here. Uh, we had, we had, we had uh, friends that were knowledgeable about uh, caving and spelunking. And this was not too far from State College, and so I, I can't tell from the expression. I think she's thinking, is this, is this now how it all ends? <laughs> this was not a commercial cave. This was a new cave that one of our hosts was showing us. So you really didn't know where you were going. Yeah, it was absolutely dark, no paths, no nothing. But when she got outside, she was... She was feeling pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is this is what we looked like when we um, when we came out. Okay, then comes Molly, and um, we had uh, left a trailer. We're moving. We moved into a, a house that an old um, uh, widower owned, and his wife died, and he uh, he wanted uh, young people young couple to live in his house and take care of it and just, uh, you know, make Excellent. meals for him. And that's, that's, that's where uh, we were living when Molly was born. Bunch of pictures of Molly. Um, Significant change in our lives. And uh, as you can imagine, the first uh, baby gets uh, photographed quite a bit. That's this is Grandma. That's my mother. And we, uh, we this went was in December, she was born in September, and we drove that winter, no, we flew, that time we flew. We flew to show Grandma and Grandpa our first child, and that was a lot of lessons I got because I had not been near her for a long time. So, of course, Mother had to tell me lots of stuff. <laughs> uh, I, we made a Christmas card with a picture, something like that, on it. <laughs> mm. Uh, uh, Ma Molly, our kids were photogenic, both of them really, really were. <clears throat> I, I like the, the brush burns above Molly's elbows. You could, you could tell she was sort of a rough and tumble youngster. Okay, this is uh, Molly and um, and myself. Uh, this is a youth. This is not a youth group activity from the church. It was a a, a contest. The the theme was the music of the fifties, and I actually uh, was pretty familiar with the music of the fifties. Uh, <laughs> That's and, an understatement. Um, I, the, the shoes. I took a pair of black shoes and painted them uh, partly white for the uh, for the occasion. And uh, we had a contest uh, uh, to see who, um, you know, the contest uh, was uh, organized to see who knew the most about the music. And so the, uh, this team uh, won that contest. <laughs> uh, okay, this is Molly at uh, graduation from Messiah. Now, this is a b big deal. Go ahead, Molly. Oh, okay. Uh, I had started my doctoral program at Penn State and uh, was humming along, and then my 
uh, and my proposal had been accepted and so on. And then my advisor was fired by Penn State because he had brought the research from Stanford without permission. So Stanford was suing Penn State. So they, the next morning, uh, we were called in. There was a group of uh, graduate students. We were called in and said, you've got to quit everything. We have fired your advisor. You can start again if you want to, but it's all over. So that was kind of disappointing. I ended up going home not knowing what to do. And uh, I had been on the uh, board at the Christian and Missionary Alliance Church, uh, the Christian Education Director. And the provost of the university was attending our church, and he knew I was in education and so on. So very soon he comes to me and he says, you know, you could help us start a Christian school. There are many parents that wanted that. Uh, and I thought, well, okay, my doctoral program is over. I guess I can do that. Uh, so David's permission and so on, we ended up starting a school. Initially it was in the church basement, and then we ended up getting a, uh, uh, what do you call this, prefab home, uh, house or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They, they brought the house in in six sections, that, yeah. that structure came in in six sections. And that's a lot of work. I mean, I'm not a contractor, but it was a lot of work trying to oversee all of that and help the um, people do it correctly so we had the kind of space we needed. Um, and so uh, with that school meant, um, there was the logo meant lots and lots of detail and um, information that you had to give to parents and to uh, uh, teachers and so forth. And here is a typical scene of a musical that you often see in schools. Um, we had a very good music teacher that year, Jan Esterline. Uh, faculty meetings, uh, on and on, why do we have to do this? <laughs> uh, of course, there were some really good faculty, and one of the faculty is here today. Just right over there is Linda yeah, Brown. Linda. Uh, she was yeah. the second grade yeah. teacher, stellar teacher, and I think you're still teaching, aren't you, Linda? <laughs> but not there, no. Yeah, you work for the IU and do uh, reading, you're a reading teacher, mm -hmm. yes and you do the, some of the private schools, and this is one of them. Um, so that was the Alliance Christian School. I did that for 10 years. Uh, one January morning, I uh, was supposed to decide if we should have school or not, because we used all the local buses, and it was about 4 o'clock that you have to make those decisions, and I bashed David in the ribs, and I said, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> it was just getting too tiring to have to do that every winter, and. Uh, I ran back to some of my faculty at Penn State that I had known, and they said, oh, yeah, you can just come back and start your program, and we'll give you some allowance from the last 10 years that you were here, and uh, but the rest is history. So she was able to go back and um, restart the PhD pursuit and um, finish in 1988. We, uh, we lived then at this time in Center Hall. This is our house in Center Hall. It's a, Neat old house, three full stories. The, the, the third story is a, has seven-foot ceilings, and then there's an attic above that. And uh, we, we loved that house, and um, uh, it was just a lot of fun. One day I came home. I brought these kittens home by just prior to Christmas, and I, it was like a week or so before Christmas, so I hid them up in the third floor until Christmas Day, and then I brought them down, and... Um, our girls love cats. They still do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Center Hall, if, if you talk about anything, it's Grange Fair. Uh, thousands of people every year camp in these rented tents, and thousands more, in addition, bring their own uh, camper or, uh, or whatever. It's a huge, huge thing. It's, 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 Joan, is this your camper here anywhere? <laughs> They all look yeah. the same. Yeah, and, and you still do this, don't you? <laughs> Two weeks now? Not just one? Yeah, yeah they, they increased it. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh, aren't you lucky? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Okay, uh, then there was a centennial for Center Hall, and uh, I uh, someone dared me to... Um, plan to enter the beard contest. And so I said, okay, I'm game, I will. And I, that was my entry. I, I, you can see I'm overdue for a wax job on my <laughs> chest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the iconic old um, uh, brown barn on the road out to Center Hall. 
And this is just another view of, of, of the valley, Penn's Valley, in close to, uh, fairly close to Bullsburg. And, and that's, that's the iconic um, uh, Mount Nittany, which, um, which is owned by a Penn State alumni organization. They, in 1946, they heard that it was going to be um, sold or leased to a lumbering company, and they said, no, no, we want, we want to buy it. And so they managed to buy it, and in the meantime, they bought hundreds of acres and now control the complete mountain, which is, which is an integral part of, of the uh, Penn State Nittany Lion uh, lore, and um, it, it's always got to be part of Penn State. This is just a scene in, in Penn's Valley, uh, we, uh, beyond, out, out beyond Center Hall. Uh, there were Amish ways. in that area. And while I was in, in Center County, I had an airplane, and I enjoyed flying very much. And that's a, a shot of uh, Mount Nittany profile. <clears throat> okay, football. Is, is, is a big deal, and this is part of the uh, crowd in uh, Beaver Stadium. We got to a few games, uh, enjoyed it very much. And in our 20th anniversary, we put on our wedding garbs and found we could still wear them. And another thing I did was I worked at the Christian radio station as a volunteer for five years. I produced and hosted a program called Hymns and Music of the Church, and I could, I really could play anything. I, I like to say anything from, a, from a Johnny Cash to Monteverdi. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I, I would usually have a theme by, uh, of a certain type of music or a certain composer or, or something else, and um, I enjoyed it very much. I had, uh, people, uh, people appreciated it and told me so. And I sang quartet in uh, Alliance Church. Uh, uh, the the uh, quartet um, makeup often changed for a while. J. Harold Stern, many uh, some of you know them know J. Harold. He was in the he was in the quartet. Okay, I don't. I'd like to remember what I what I did here to <laughs> d deserve that hug, but <laughs> but it was uh, somebody grabbed the picture and we used it. So then Betsy comes along, and um, we have a lot of the number picture. Betsy uh, being held by her uh, cousin. There's Elsie's oldest boy is in the middle, and then you can see Betsy is the little baby that my older sister Lydia's oldest boy, uh, and the other boy in the back is Lydia's son. And then in the front with the uh, red shirt is, um, Carl, uh, is um, Colleen, who is uh, Elsie's oldest daughter. Yeah, Ben, some more Betsy. Flower girl at a wedding of uh, some young friends. <coughs> We love kittens. Both the girls took um, violin lessons, and Molly also took piano lessons. And, uh, and Molly uh, switched to vocal in college. Betsy's good with her hands. She did the needlepoint. I don't know what grade that would have been, but you're pretty young there. And here in Penns Valley, or uh, Penns Valley, in uh, Cumberland. <laughs> Cumberland Valley, she was in a quartet, uh, did a lot of playing. And she always had a book at the end of her hand, no matter if we went shopping or whatever. Molly likes shopping, Betsy liked reading. <laughs> so she always had a book at the end of her hand or wherever we were. Okay, our friends, the Hiles, who, who showed up here today, who, for which we're very grateful, were great uh, craftsmen, artists, artisans. They made those uh, chests, one for each of the girls. And uh, the newspaper wanted to photograph these items and uh, decided they would photograph them with these girls there. And that picture, a similar picture, was in the paper. And uh, Dan Heil, over here, right here. And um, Steve. And his son, and, Steve. And Steve, uh, and it was, it's just one of the many things that came out of their shop that are 
in our house now. So Velma really, really spent a lot of time with the girls, just like she does with the grandsons now. She goes on all these rides with, uh, here it's Betsy and Molly, and uh, it's, it's really great to, um, that they have <laughs> Velma. <laughs> oh, this is at a, a trip uh, to the shore. I think, I think we're, we were with Varney's uh, at this time, and um, they probably took that picture. We made several big trips with this van. I bought this van uh, as a used van and did a lot of work on it, and um, we, we, uh, we did some cross-country driving with it. And this is a trip to the Maritimes with the girls, Maritime Canadian provinces. Anne of Green Gables House. This was very important for Betsy. We enjoyed seeing her excitement and uh, the kinds of, uh, at Prince, yeah, in Prince Edward Island. Um, I don't, <coughs> is the next picture, yeah, okay. She, I don't remember how old you were. What year was this, anyway? Um, but she made the 90. dress. Betsy made her own dress specifically for that trip so she could go to the Anna Green Gables house with a dress she had made. And this was a, a trip in, uh, I think, in 85, the one where we stopped in at Orange and uh, Molly's uh, trying her hand at um, sailing. <coughs> and we found our old house and found that it had uh, sustained considerable damage with the fire which is sad to uh, behold. Okay, we went to the uh, Paul Simon concert on, in Central Park in 1991, I think it was, and it was an amazing thing. Hundreds of thousands of people were there. The stage was far too far away for us to see anything, but the projection um, provided a reasonable view. The concert was like what, five o'clock or something it started. We were there early and we had lots of room. We had the blankets spread out. We had l lunch and so on. But then people kept coming, so you had to kind of con consolidate and consolidate and consolidate until finally no blanket and uh, just standing. And then at the end, I think I was even on David's shoulders. Uh, yeah, talk about claustrophobia. You, you can see people uh, just standing shoulder to shoulder. This is uh, Velma uh, working at the, towards the end of her PhD project. <laughs> and finally, graduation comes. Uh, Shirley and, and a few other family members came out. I had lots of help. To, uh, for graduation. Here are the proud uh, family with, uh, with Mama. And these other family members, including my mother on the right and Margaret uh, behind her, and Lawrence and Shirley. And then Lawrence and Shirley's three boys with uh, Bradley in the Beth. front. Mm -hmm. And Beth Ann uh, Schwartz on the very left and uh, Beth Ann's mother uh, in the sort of in between on uh, Beth Ann's left. And that's Evangeline who's no longer among us. Now. So then when I was about to graduate, I was trying to think of where to go. David did not want to move away from Centre Hall. But when the opening at Messiah College uh, happened, he seemed to be interested to move. So we ended up, uh, I got a position here at Messiah College, and my office was, you can see the kind of, it looks like dormer, but they're not dormer windows. But my office was way up on the third floor at the um, end here. Uh, at this point, they've changed the doorways in the back, but that was where my little office was, and I had 23 wonderful years at Messiah College, although my office did change. However, I learned very quickly that that was the same building that David had same floor. on the third floor at Messiah College when he attended. It was many, many years ago. So... The, on the... Oh, right oh. here. Yeah, that's, yeah. That was my So idea. this is, uh, so now we're living in um, Mechanicsburg. This is our house at uh, Christmas time. Uh. Okay, the famous rope swing, um, which is no more. There's a big long story there, which we won't relate. But, um, okay, this is oh, a picture oh, we got in twice. saw okay. before. Yeah. But it's fine. 
There, that's a uh, wolf. He's uh, he's there someplace. And that's Wolfie's um, sister, who lives in Germany. Uh, she comes so once or twice a year, and uh, we know her very well. And and she's just a very wonderful girl. And um, she's in seventh grade and taller than I am. <laughs> yeah, she is she's going to be very <coughs> tall. But she and Wolfie, uh, yeah, do do love each other, and that's great. And that's. Uh, uh, David in the middle. Uh, he's uh, going to return in a few days from a year, a one-year assignment in Saudi Arabia. He's a uh, commander in the United States Navy, and um, he'll be he'll be coming back on Tuesday. He just misses this event sadly. Which I was so sorry that he had to miss it, but he had to go that way. That's that's him on the day he. Graduated. graduated from, um, he, got, he took a degree uh, in uh, the uh, military college in Washington, D.C. That's his second master's. And that's Wolfie and his dad. There's uh, Ali, Wolfie, and Henry at our house. Okay, Reverend uh, Moss and Betsy and uh, Henry, a couple years ago, it looks like. <laughs> In, in his uh, church at some point, some more of uh, Henry and his daddy. There's uh, Henry. He's Hen Henry is quite a crackerjack. He's <laughs> he's a lot of fun, <clears throat> and they love their grandmother. Those boys. And grandmother goes right in and takes um, and and plays with them. Uh, she uh, she plays soccer with them in um, in the yard or baseball or uh, races up and down the driveway, whatever it is. She's there. Good. We're Michael and Elsie Packer from uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We want to thank you for singing the Canadian national anthem somewhat slowly and reluctantly. Um, <laughs> and we can understand that, because 200 years ago was the War of 1812 and on. And this was the year, 200 years ago, that Canada invaded the United States. We came as far as Washington and burned down your White House. So I can sense your reluctance. But you got your own back the next year, because you came up to York, the village of York, across Lake Ontario, and burned that down and that is now a metropolitan city of Toronto. So you got your own bag. And I know from the program that uh, a little later are all the reflections from friends, but since we've got the mics now, and I will just take the opportunity at this point just to say a comment on the pictures. I'm sure you saw the picture of our mother's face. She did not look very delighted in losing her daughter to this American. She was very upset, and I, um, I suffered the consequences of that. I was a little younger, so I lived with mom's grief and losing her daughter. But I do want to say that David fulfilled a lot of, uh, what can I say? He brought Velma back to Canada many, many times, as you can see in, a, in the album that I made for her. And uh, we really appreciated the fact that Dave did not just cut her off. He brought her back, and we've had a wonderful relationship with this very eccentric American. <laughs> <laughs> so it's our privilege this afternoon to read passage of, passages of scripture uh, selected by Dave and Vell. These are scriptures written by the God that we worship. From Colossians chapter 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. 
and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Scripture from the Song of Solomon. My beloved speaks and says to me in chapters 2 and 8, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom, they give forth fragrance. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If one offered for love all the wealth of his house, it would be utterly scorned. From 1 Corinthians 13, if I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Thanks be to God. Remiss, I guess, if I didn't say something. I'm not exactly sure the year that I met Dave and Velma, but I think it was the early 70s. And I think they were at Tom Dale's house, or Dale's place. But anyway, um, we're, we're having a picnic, and you might fill this in, but some of the people in our class, I think they had a young adult class, they said, you and your wife ought to meet the Yoders. They obviously saw that we might have something in common. And whether it was in common or not, it's been a long time. It's not been the full 50 years, but maybe 54 or 44 of the years. And um, I got to ask David a question now. The MG you showed, is that the one you were trying to fix all these years? Yeah. <laughs> there was a standing joke, uh, you know, hey Dave, how about the MG? Oh, it's out in the garage, you know. But we've had a lovely relationship. Uh, we did many things together in church and uh, we, um, pounded the scriptures together sometimes, and uh, uh, it was a lovely experience. I was fortunate enough to meet Dave's mother and his father. I met Velma's mother. I don't think I met your dad. But uh, Dave's mother was, um, she was a jewel, a gem. She was uh, a great lady. And um, just as, as brief as possible, I'm just glad to have this relationship with the odors uh, all these years. I wasn't planning to say anything because I don't think I could say anything and not cry. And then if I get started, then we'll be here till. <laughs> anyway, I just don't know what to say except that Velma's my soulmate and. Dave, he's Velma and my north. He's our compass. I mean, I'll give you a story that I'm sure they don't even know. Um, when we were in college, um, you know, you're graduate students, you try not to, you're on a budget. And I found this great food that I came home and told Bob, hamburger helper, it's awesome. It's just great, it's so easy. And so Velma got, on, and I told Velma about it. And so Dave used to do the shopping 
And so he went to get it and he came home empty handed and he said to Velma, it's the closest thing to sand you will ever buy. <laughs> and so, I don't think they ever had a hamburger helper to this day. But um, I just, I'm not good. I don't have a structured life. So um, Christmas cards, Christmas birthdays go by. I don't remember those things. I have yet not to receive a birthday card from my friend Velma, who is busier than I am, but she's there. Uh, I think the best friendship is that if there's any crisis in my life, I will know that Velma and Dave will be there. Um, when Velma had her cancer, I dropped everything and tried to get there at least once a week, just to walk and talk, and it was such a rich time. And of course, that's the problem with life. When the crisis, we promised each other, but when the crisis is over, you go back to your old life. But those are the moments that makes this friendship so rich for both of us, the couple to couple. As I, as I was, um, wrote in our card, I think we did friendship life together, and there's nobody that right. means as much to us as these two people that we will spend eternity with, thanks Amen. to them. Amen. Uh, we're Jonathan and Kathleen Lauer. I started at Messiah College the same year Velma did. Uh, there's a children's poem we used to recite to our kids, uh, who are now 36 and 32, and we tried to reproduce it from memory, and we came close. So Kathleen's, so Kathleen's yeah. going to read okay. the best we can do with this poem. Because we're thinking about time today. All kinds of time. Seconds are bugs. Minutes are children. Hours are road trips. Days are sunshine and moonlight. Weeks are Sunday school. Months are north, south, east, west, and in between. Years are Santa Claus. Centuries are George Washington, and forever is God. And David and Velma, we thank you for all the times you've shown us hospitality. Uh, we've lived for 25 years with no relatives closer than 700 miles, and you have been family to us. Yes, I just uh, I had asked Jonathan, can you say anything without crying? <laughs> he said yes, but he lied. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So yes, we have many, many happy memories spent, you know, of shared memories with you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I remember um, a couple years back, one or two, when we went to um, your house for the Yoda reunion. I remember that rope swing. That was really fun. I mean, it was like a station stop of the whole creek. Yeah, um, we had lots of fun on that. I also remember every time we go to a um, reunion of some sort and sing, Uncle Dave always seems to have his pitch pipe with him. <laughs> he always, hmm. <laughs> okay. Hey, thank you to all of you. As you know, I'm the only representative of Velma's family here. We, ha we do come from a large family, but she is way off in the East Coast here. Uh, our, my other siblings, uh, health-wise, uh, time-wise, all that kind of situation, I mean, they are 50 years older than when Vel and Dave first got married, uh, were just not able to come. But on behalf of them, I want to thank you for adopting Velma as, like Shirley says, your sisters. I've, Vel and I talk on the telephone probably an hour every week, and I know you all by name, but I don't know the name to the face. <laughs> and I know stories about you all that I won't share either, but I know how much you have all meant to Val and Dave. And on behalf of her side of the family, I want to just thank you for the love and graciousness and friendship and for your being here today and for taking her as your own. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming and giving up such a beautiful Saturday, sunny afternoon. I can't imagine uh, that you've done it all. Each of you are so very important in our lives. 
The table over there, of course, my sister, you know how important that is. And Jonathan and Kathy have been so extremely gracious to us. Liz, we really enjoy and love you. And then there's this whole Yoder relative stuff here, which is wonderful. You've hosted the Yoder reunions so many times, and I've been part of it, and it's been a blessing. And for you guys to come from Texas, that's pretty far. <laughs> it's a big state alone, and then all the way up here. Thank you so much for coming. And the table over there, the Grantham Church and the Bible study group, you've meant a lot to us, very much. And here are the Hiles, who were so significant in our lives every day. I look at those beautiful cupboards, the table, yes. And State College, I thank you so much for coming, Dan and Joan. I don't know how old, Molly, you were when all of a sudden you said, Aunt Joan is not my aunt, really? <laughs> That's how close they were. She took care of Betsy and Molly summer after summer. But you had the pool, so that helped. <laughs> anyway, I hope I didn't miss anybody, but it's been wonderful to have you here. And Bob and Sandy, I, I'm, you know, it's good you're here. <laughs> I want to publicly thank our daughters for doing this and Molly for your great giving spirit in the midst of all of the confusion that you have going with David Abroad and so on. And Betsy, the competence and the gracious spirit that you've given through all of this, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. I've been greatly blessed. But you probably surmised that from the pictures. God has given me a heritage of those who fear his name, Psalm 61. And I'm forever grateful for that. And David, this is a poem that Jonathan, you introduced me to by T.H. S. Wallace, The Promise. I say, because I had free will, because everything is ordained, I said yes. I took you for all the reasons, and none of the reasons, knowing what I did not know, not knowing what I would come to know, and it is just as well. And all the reasons for marriage, in marriage, by marriage, change, save one, faithfulness. It has been worse, and it will be better. It has been better, and it will be worse. This double bond of joy and suffering. Who said this yoke is easy? Who said the road was smooth? But the wind at my back was your voice. And I love you still. I don't know what I can say right now. I, um, I had some, some ideas for um, some comment at this point, but I would just say that I, I have a lot of trouble making up my mind about a lot of things. You know, I, I really mull over decisions and um, options and <clears throat> Whatever, whatever I'm doing, whether it's you know building a birdhouse or uh, or whatever, but um, but as I think back, it didn't take me long to reach the decision that that Velma was the right person, and I'm sure it was a it was it was the right decision, and and so I ascribe that to. Um, the um, desire to follow God's will and the fact that, in fact, God's will was for us to uh, come together and 
form a new um, entity. And uh, well, I just want to also um, reiterate what Velma said about um, Molly and Betsy, their uh, their work at this, and and throughout the years they have they have been a, a real delight in our lives and. Um, and we uh, thank the Lord for them. And we thank the Lord for each and every one of you. You're all so special. And um, I, I just can't imagine a, a more fortunate situation for a fellow to be in than what I'm in right now. Thanks a lot.